Next up on WTV, a look at the effects of GPA, math classes decorating the ceiling, a student entrepreneur, and today's Sports Minute. WTV's daily update starts now. Good morning, Red Hawk Nation. Today is Wednesday, January 10th, and I'm Caitlin Clybert with another daily update brought to you by Wingspan TV. With the end of first semester on Friday, ranks will soon be released for students to see. WTV's Jordan Klein has the story. Starting in ninth grade, students are given a rank, which is the order of students in each grade level based off their weighted GPA. Ranks tell colleges about the student um, how they fit within the other students at their school, so kind of about the culture of the school. Is it a competitive school like many of the schools in Frisco ISD are? Um, top 10% rule is a big thing that colleges look at, uh, especially in Texas. So if you are in the top 10% of your class, you're granted that automatic admission to public universities in the state of Texas, except for UT Austin, which I think is now going down to 6%. Despite the potential benefits of a high rank, some students disagree with the system. I don't think rank is an accurate representation of your intelligence because sometimes you can get a bad grade in a class because it's like a hard unit or something. It just kind of skews your whole GPA and then messes up your rank. And also Liberty is just like super competitive with rank. So whatever you're ranked here, you might not be ranked the same at Heritage or Lone Star or something like that. Ranks are reevaluated each year, however class rank freezes for seniors at the end of the fifth six weeks in order to determine who is valedictorian and salutatorian of the class. Students can find their rank on Family Connection or the Home Access Center. Reporting for WTV, I'm Jordan Klein. Walking around the school, you can look up and see how math meets art for a reoccurring pre-calculus project. WTV's Isabella Santiago has the details. Students can apply their lessons in class in a much more creative way by using the knowledge of shapes and parabolas to create art on ceiling tiles. Where we use conic sections to make artwork. So embedded within the art are actually math equations for shapes such as ellipses, circles, parabolas, and hyperbolas. And so what the students have to do is pick a picture and then see how they can incorporate those equations into the artwork. And we have to make it around like circles and parabolas and ellipses and hyperbolas and then your picture has to go around that and it has to have all that in it. Pre-Cal teachers have been doing this project for years and believe it is most beneficial for visual learners. Well, it really helps those who are more visual learners as a different way to express and show that they understood something. However, teachers think it is a more enjoyable and creative way for students to learn. It's also a fun activity to kind of close out the semester. Surprisingly, students find the most difficulty in the art rather than the math. Actually, the most challenging part, believe it or not, is them choosing what they want to draw. Once they figure that out, then they can kind of work it out and figure out where they can put the ellipse or where they can put the circle. But I see more kids spending time on which cartoon character they want to draw. But once they figure that out, then the math usually comes pretty easily. For WTV, I'm Isabella Santiago. Some students get jobs to earn money, but some decide to work for themselves. WTV's Melody Akbari has the story on one student who is capitalizing on her creations. Junior Brenna Dobbs decided to create an all-natural product business called Essential Body Shop. I started it um, this summer because all my friends are way older than me and they were able to get a job, but I wasn't, so I wanted to just start making money by myself. She personally makes all her products, which consist of candles, body scrubs, bath salts, and soaps, with no assistance. Um, I make candles out of natural soy wicks, and I burn those, and then I add color and essential oil, and then I just place it in the uh, mason jar, and I wait a couple hours for them to complete. The price of her products range from $8 to $20, and she makes an average of $600 a month. Although managing a business while in school can prove to be challenging. Um, it has been stressful, but honestly, it's self-paced, so if I need to slow down on the business, I can, so I can focus on school. Supporting her self-made business may prove to be tough, but pays off with the satisfaction of her customers. Well, I recently bought a candle from Brenna, mm -hmm. and I thought the quality, the price, was very nice, actually. I want to buy another one. Brenna's plans for her business after graduating doesn't include her personal involvement, but rather passing it on to a family member. I think I'm going to 
give it off to my sister so she has something to do so she can get money because after high school and I'm in college, I don't think I'm going to want to pursue further into this. Anybody interested in Brenna's products can visit essentialbodyshop.wix.com slash essentialbodyshop. This is Melody Ekbari reporting for Wingspan TV. Boys and girls basketball played Frisco last night. Here's today's Sports Minute. Both basketball teams were in action last night at the Nest as the Red Hawks faced off against Frisco High School. The girls team got off to a hot start jumping to a quick 17-2 lead in the first quarter. It was all the Red Hawks after that as they outscored the Raccoons again in the second, third, and fourth quarter. Aiding in the win was scoring from juniors Mara Casey and Randy Thompson with Casey totaling 12 and Thompson with 10 points leading to the Red Hawks 53-26 point win. Boys basketball did have a little more struggle with Frisco, who was able to remain in the game with a season-high scoring effort from Trent Becker, who scored 22 points for the Raccoons. The Red Hawks outscored Frisco in the first quarter, 23-18, and both teams were even in scoring in the second quarter. Going into the second half, basketball got off to a slow start as Frisco outscored the Red Hawks 16-15, but they were able to answer in the fourth quarter, leading to their 67-60 win over the Raccoons, with large scoring efforts from senior Zach Watson adding 19 points to the total, and junior Zion Richardson, who had 18. This is Davis O'Brien reporting for Wingspan TV. If you're looking for more from Wingspan, you can follow us at Liberty Wingspan on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or visit our award-winning website, libertywingspan.com. WTV's Neha Paramala brings you today's announcements. Chess Club will be meeting today after school in room C217. All levels are welcomed. Wrestling has a dual meet against Reedy Thursday at home. Hockey plays McKinney Varsity Gold at the Dr. Pepper Arena Thursday at 7. Girls basketball plays Reedy at Reedy Friday at 6. Boys basketball plays Reedy at Reedy Friday at 7.15. Girls soccer goes against McKinney at McKinney Friday at 7.15. Wrestling competes in the Trinity Tournament at ULS Trinity Friday and Saturday. There is a mandatory HOSA meeting before and after school January 16th in the lecture hall. There is a HOSA study session during advisory on January 16th in the lecture hall. That's it for today's daily update. This has been Caitlin Clybert for Wingspan TV.